well, now, yeah, I'm back again. I am so privileged and honored to introduce someone to you that's close and dear to my heart. He's a good man. <laughs> the best one for me. Um, and I'm so thankful. Um, he is a man of the word. You would, my daughter even sent him a text yesterday and for the whole time she's known him. She was three when we met. And he's always find him five o'clock, some ridiculous time in the morning, 4.35, out on our porch with the word, having fellowship with the Lord. In a very quiet, you know, obviously mine's more of a loud time with the Lord. His is more of a quiet time, but that's his personality. So it works really well. Um, but I am so thankful tonight and excited to hear what God has given him to share with all of us tonight. So I want to introduce to you Minister Brian True is going to bring the word to you tonight. Thank you. Am I on? Okay. Well, thank you, Pastors James and Debbie Watts, for giving me this opportunity, allowing me to stand on this side of the pulpit. Uh, it's, a real, it's a real treat for me, and I pray it will be for you, too. <laughs> um, pastors, we miss you, and we look forward to having you back on Sunday, I hope. Um, I'm going to speak for a while on a, on a scripture verse that you're all very familiar with and you've, you've heard many times, but we're going to build on it a little bit and go deeper into the fruit of the Spirit. Um, so let's pray first. In the name of Jesus, Father God, I just ask, I, I thank, thank you for your presence with us. Everything we do lifts you up and glorifies you. And I thank you, Holy Spirit, for your presence here tonight. Fill this room. Fill our hearts. Heal us. Encourage us. Guide us. And lift us up. Jesus, Jesus. I thank you so much, Jesus, Jesus. You gave us, you, you gave us the cross. You gave us your resurrection. You gave us your word confirmed by your disciples and written. And you gave us your name. You gave us your name to use, the name that is above every name. So, Father God, in the name of your precious Son, Jesus, I just thank you tonight and lift, up, lift you up and glorify you in our, in our words. Amen. Amen. Um, well, let's, um, let's start right in, jump in with Galatians 5, 22 and 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. Paul says against such there is no law because if your character and nature have these attributes and you exhibit all these things, you won't be doing anything, number one, to get in trouble with the physical law, the governmental law, nor will you be doing anything to have to go to God for forgiveness for. So there's no law. If you act in, within, with, and, and show all these things, then you don't need to worry about um, repercussions or problems. I, I want to tell you this, this book, the Bible, comforts me. This is either by my bedside or in the car. It's one or the other, but it's always there. Yes, I have this. I've got the Bible in it. It can be a great concordance. I can find things quickly. But I got to tell you, this thing can be shut off by someone. Suddenly, permanently. So, I know you all have <laughs> the printed word, but there's just there's just something about the printed word there really is. So, so um, 
So we read Galatians 5, 20, 22 to 23. That's what I'm going to expand on. But I want to read, if you can go back to Galatians 5, 19. I want to bring up, and I will read it from the King James, what Paul prefaced that verse with. So Galatians 5, 19. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murderers, <sighs> drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of the which I tell you before I have also told you in times past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God, but the fruit of the Spirit. So... What he, what he does is he warns us. He was warning the Galatians, but then, but then he, he gave them solutions. It, it's okay to bring up problems at work or with someone. That's okay, but come with a solution also. So that's what, that's what Paul's doing in these previous verses. Um. So it seems to me we want to <clears throat> grow the Spirit in us so we produce the fruit. And it also seems to me, just like in the real world, as opposed to the spiritual, let's say uh, you, you want to plant an apple tree, and you want it to grow to its maturity, so you can get some apples to pluck off and eat, to benefit you and enjoy. Well, the same is in the Spirit. The apple tree didn't go from a seed to providing apples overnight. Neither does the maturity of the Spirit in you. It, it, it similarly must, uh, I think, follow a similar, similar path. So the first thing you do with a tree is you have to prepare good soil. And to me, that's like God preparing my heart. So there was a time when I was totally in the world, oblivious to the Word of God or God or the Spirit of God or being born again or what Jesus did on the cross. But God began to prepare my heart. And a seed has to be planted to grow an apple tree. And in the same way, I had to be born again, accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior, and that is a seed. That was the beginning. I was a baby. I was a child. I wasn't a full-grown spirit man with all the developed fruit Paul lists. So the tree, as it, once it comes out of the ground has to be fertilized. And to me, that's like being fed by the Word of God. So, I was born again. I have a, the bot, we are the, the spirit, soul, and body. We have a spirit in us. The Holy Spirit is something else. Another, the Spirit of God, part of the triune, part of God, God. But, so, I'm, I'm born again, and I've got a little sprout up out of the ground, and I have a spirit in me. So we need to be, we need to feed ourselves by reading and hearing to, to feed our spirit and help it grow, just like we have to do the apple tree to give it a chance to bear fruit. We also have to water the apple tree. And I think watering would be... For example, similar to the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit waters the seed of faith in me to grow, and then the spirit man grows as the full tree. Um, but there's also one more thing we need to do to the apple tree to keep it healthy and grow and produce good apples and fruit. We have to prune the apple tree every now and then. Well... Rubbing up against others prunes us. And my, 
Mary Ann's heard me say this many times, and I mean it in a good way. God and I are fine. It's just all the people I have a problem with. <laughs> I, uh, so when I, when I start from that preface <laughs> and I wrap the Word of God around me, then, then I can, I can, I can, I'll be fine. I do fine. Um, um, so pruning, for example, let's say um, someone cuts you off in your car, you're driving. And let's say you lose yourself for a moment and you tailgate and honk your horn. Well, you're about to get pruned. In that case, God is going to prune you by convicting you. You ask forgiveness, He gives you forgiveness, and you go on. The other, rather than doing that, you could have backed off when that person cut you off, and everything would have been fine, and you wouldn't have had to been pruned. But just like the apple tree, we're developing our spirit to its full maturity, and there's going to be times when you're going to get pruned. I promise you. So let's go into the first one, the the fruit of the Spirit, love. John 15, verse 13. Jesus speaking, Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for a friend, for his friends, plural. I think it's possible, and we know there's cases where someone's tried to save someone who's drowning, but they lose their own life in, in the effort. That may or not be exactly what Jesus is referring to, but that certainly falls under the fruit of the Spirit, love. We, would, we should be able to do such a thing if we've, uh, we've got the evidence of that fruit, love, in our life. More than likely, maybe he, he referred to the fact, let's say you're wrapped up in work and life and busyness, and someone calls and You don't have a minute to spare, but he's in trouble and he didn't plan very well and he's got to move out of his apartment and he needs your help. So you drop whatever you're doing and you go over and help him. That's maybe a case of um, um, laying down your life for that person. That's another example. Um, When we love something, we want to do it often. When we love someone, we want to be with that person all the time. That is, I mean, that is if you have the love of the Spirit in you. If, it's, if, the, if the, the, the Holy Spirit has developed and grown and now some of the evidence of the Spirit is showing forth as fruit. Amen. When we love Jesus, we will want to please Him and be obedient to His teaching. Amen. We are to love all, even those who hate us. Amen. Even those who tell lies about us, whatever the case may be. So you will have the ability to do that when you've reached maturity with your spirit man by the Holy Spirit. Uh, The second spirit Paul referred to is joy. We have a joy in the house. I see you. (laughs) Every time I see joy, every time she walks in, she's smiling. And I, I just immediately go to this verse. And I think joy and I see joy and makes me happy too when she's smiling. So just like joy, we are to have joy and it will will show on your face and others will see it and they'll be happy to be around, around you. Number three, peace through the Spirit. Isaiah 26, verse 3. Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusteth in thee. When we are full of the Holy Spirit, it's mature, we're guided by the Holy Spirit, we we will find that we are filled with peace. Um, I got to tell you, though, I wear hearing aids. And all of you out there that were with hearing aids, you know what I mean. When I take them out, it's peaceful. I'm in peace. I'm, I don't mean, I don't mean Marianne at all. I mean Marianne. Marianne is gone for the day. I take my hearing aids out. 
It's peaceful. I'm telling you, it's peaceful. But maybe that's not exactly what Paul was referring to. Um, but I, I will t- walking in peace is much better than walking around frustrated, in stress, or full of anger. Much better. Much better to walk in peace. Everybody around you seems to be peaceful more. <laughs> you come in, you come in with a bad attitude to work. It's gonna, they're gonna feel it and they're gonna see it. There's enough strife in the world anyway. So find peace, and be with others who are peaceful. Number four, long suffering. Ephesians four, Ephesians four verses one through three. Um, I'm going to take a little detour here, just a quick one. This week, so I was given 48 hours to deliver a message. Praise God. I, first thing I had to do was chase peace, because it was heading on down. It was heading down the room. So I chased down peace and pulled it back in, and I was okay. And... And I, I began to realize what an honor it is for the pastor to, to allow me to do this. Um, long suffering. So, yesterday, yesterday, late morning, I get a text and some information that uh, my help was being requested. <sighs> Come back here, peace. I've got this to prepare. I'm at work, I do work full time, and it's all good. Um, So, I was asked to help a lady whose son is in the local jail. And Marianne and I have brought Tony into the situation and we're, we're, we're hoping he'll be able to get touch with this man and help him. I want to be able to see him too. But his mother wanted to get his truck out of the impound lot. So I said, okay. So I left work early yesterday and drove to the impound lot and I met her. She had already gone to the jail and got some papers she needed. So we go up to this little door with a, the door with a little slot and somebody opens it a little bit. And we hand the papers to him and he comes right back with, well, this doesn't look like this will allow you to take this truck out of here. Mm. I, I have, I have to, I'm looking for which piece of fruit I need for this situation. <laughs> After two or three attempts, he lets us get the truck. Great. Some joy. Um, so we're walking toward, so he says, I'm going to open this chain leak gate. You need to walk toward the back to the truck. Fine. So I'm walking with this woman. And here comes this guy in a golf cart with empty seats driving by us. <sighs> love, love, grab a piece of love. I had to... So we walk, we walk back and get the truck, and I drive it through the one gate. He closes the gate, and we're in this other little parking area, and there's another gate out to the main street. This is all going on yesterday afternoon. And... He comes out and says, you got 10 minutes to move all these vehicles I need to lock up. Well, we got three vehicles and two drivers. So I think about it a minute, and right outside the main gate, it's it's not a busy street. There's a big, wide grass median. So we start moving three vehicles to the grass median. And on my way back to get the truck and get it out of there, and that'll be the last vehicle, I'm praying for the man. And I think that's where love again comes in. But um, we were able to accomplish it with a little long suffering, some peace, some love, and joy came out of it because we accomplished our task, at least that far. So there's more to the story, but this woman's from Leesburg, and I, I managed to get a vehicle to our house. 
And then Marianne came home, and with the help of Cheryl Mize, they drove a vehicle to Leesburg and back. So out of all that, we managed to get the truck out down to Leesburg, and she had her personal vehicle in the truck, so everything was fine. Um, so that was, that was a blessing. And then last night, I had a message prepared by that time. I thought it was pretty good. Mary Ann thought it was pretty good. Some others said it was pretty good. But the Holy Spirit last night at about 5 o'clock took me in another direction. So I started this message last night at about 5 or 6. But God is always gracious, merciful, and God, you know, all you got to do is be willing. If you're willing, then you step out. It's amazing what opens up for you, and it'll all be there. It'll... So I looked at that situation, and I thought, well, that was a big bowl of fruit. I needed a little sum of peace, some love, some long-suffering, and then I got joy out of it. So number five, fruit of the Spirit. gentleness. I'm not so sure how much needs to be added to that. You can surely envision a gentle word, a kind, soft word in response to maybe an elevated uh, word from someone. Gentleness will um, tame and temper a situation that might develop worse and it may bring someone else down to your level of gentleness. So, you know, it seems to me these fruits of the Spirit, once you have the Holy Spirit, and you need to ask for the Holy Spirit, but once you have the Holy Spirit, and you're fed with the Word, watered with the Spirit, the Holy Spirit in you grows and matures, and these fruits start to become evident. Um, Sometimes situations require a combination of the fruit. And, and that's okay, too, because you've got all these at your, at your disposal. So the next one is goodness, which seems to go quite close with gentleness. Um, goodness, the opposite of good is bad, right? Well, I don't know if there's a badness, but the opposite of goodness might be Bad. <laughs> Thank you. Um, but goodness should be seen in our motivations, in our actions. But what I was starting to say earlier, it seems to me as the Holy Spirit grows and all this, these fruit, this fruit starts to become evident and, and sprout and grow and, and increase, that the fruit can be, you can pluck the fruit off and apply it inwardly. It can also be applied outwardly. Um, people can see the fruit. You can share the fruit. You can help give someone fruit. But it can also, when you need peace, that could be an inward, something inwardly you need to draw on the Holy Spirit that you may need. So the fruit of the Spirit could apply to you as you need it, but it should always, of course, at times be evident outwardly also. Um, the goodness of Christ is to be demonstrated in our lives every day. So, yeah, goodness, I think you, you got a pretty good idea of what that entails. Faith. Romans 10, 17. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Faith in God's Word is the strong root system that supports, feeds, and upholds all the other growth of the fruit. So if you've got faith, seems to me the joy and the goodness and the love is supported by faith. So the way you get faith and increase your faith is coming to church, praying, reading the Word. Um, so feed your spirit and you will have the fruit of faith meekness 
Um, meekness is... <sighs> Jesus said the meek shall inherit the earth on the Sermon on the Mount. And the world thinks meekness is a weakness. Well, it's, it's not at all in the spiritual sense, nor in the heavenly sense, nor by what Paul means here. Um, so if we think meek means letting the other person push you around, well, that's just how the world per- perceives it. God's definition of meekness is a calm temper of mind, not easily provoked. So, the meek shall inherit the earth. I can see by being meek, doesn't mean you're weak, but you step back. And if there's a situation or the whole world has gone crazy and they self-destruct and implode, the meek are still standing there, they'll inherit the earth. Because, because they weren't a part of the chaos. So keep yourself, keep yourself and your mind and your spirit. Increase your faith. Um, the last one is temperance. I kind of like this one. Now this one means a lot to me. 1 Corinthians 10:23. All things are lawful for me, but not all things are expedient. All things are lawful for me, but all things edify not. I've told the kids, my kids and others, um, just because you can do something doesn't mean you should. So, you got lots of money, you got extra money, the bills are all paid. Well, okay, that doesn't mean you go off or... Uh, spend it wastefully or um, um, get in trouble with it. Self-control. Um, temperance in eating, in, in anything. Whatever it may be, temper, um, how far you go with something. Do what's necessary, but don't. Um, there's no need to you need to control yourself. You don't need to lose control. Um, it's an attitude of moderation and self-restraint. So you should be thinking about temperance all the time. Too much, too much TV. Um, with, all, with all I had going, I have not watched TV in two days. I'm not bragging. I'm not, you know, whatever. But I didn't have time, and I had to focus on tonight. So... I tempered myself, and I just said, I'm not turning on the television. So, just because you can do something does not mean you should. This becomes more relevant as you increase in goods or position. Um, You've got to temper yourself, and um, you'll be the happier for it. So, in... Coming to a close, do you want to live a good life, a happy life, a healthy life, a prosperous life? Ask the Holy Spirit into your life. Prepare the soil of your heart. Plant the seed of the Word of God. Feed on the Word of God daily so the seed you have planted will grow. Allow the Holy Spirit to prune you whenever it is needed so weeds are kept out and do not choke the Word or your spirit. Continue to allow the Holy Spirit to water the Word. These steps will allow the fruit of the Spirit to spring forth out of your very being and bring forth life to everything it touches. So, I, I just, um, I really enjoy the way Paul <coughs> um, phrases things. And this is a perfect example in one of the one of my favorite verses and something we should remember, but the, the fruit of the Spirit and all that it brings, remember, going back to the previous works, the fruit of the Spirit will push out and deny and do away with what the flesh wants. <laughs> and it's always there. The flesh is going to be there. Don't worry about it. You don't have to water it or fertilize it. <laughs> um, It'll be there. It's going to grow. You know, 
Isn't it amazing? You can clear, you can clear a three foot by three foot piece of ground or an acre. I don't care. You can turn it and churn it and burn it and go away and it rains and a week or two later you come back and there's weeds everywhere. And you know what? I, I was thinking about that while I was preparing this and I was thinking in, in that, by observing that, I am in real time seeing God's word take place in front of my eyes. Genesis 1. And God said, let the earth be covered with grass. And it was so. And as Pastor James always adds, God said it was so and it was good. And, but I only said that to say, sure. I'm not aware of anybody that goes around with company and all he does is um, plant grass or seed all day long. It, it appears. It comes out of the ground. So fulfilling God's word. I'm looking at it and I'm seeing this is God's word in front of me. But um, um, so in bringing up the soil, just um, um, protect yourself, employ temperance, hear the word often, as often as you can, read the word whenever you can. Um, act with meekness, gentleness, and long-suffering with others. Try to be at peace, happy, enjoy, and love everybody, no matter what they do or who they are. Or, or if you, if you, yeah, if you can do half of that, you're you're in a good place. <laughs> Just so, but, but it's all it's already it's it's always there if you need it. I've got all of that inside me, and I hope I, you see that fruit on me a lot of the time, but if I ever need it alone, just with me, it's inside, and the Holy Spirit, I just have to grab a piece and, and use it. So anyway, I hope that blessed you a little. I... Um, Thank you. I just want to close and say that this is all predicated on being filled with the Holy Spirit, which is where the fruit comes from. So if there's, if there's, I'm going to close, but if there's anyone who needs to come forth, there'll be ministers that can pray with you if you need to receive the Holy Spirit. Because without that planted in your, in your heart, um, there, you'll have no chance of this fruit growing. So feel free, feel free to come up, and I hope this blessed you a little. Thank you.